Hello, 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 everyone. It is Dr. Brandy B coming to you today for Focus On It Friday. Welcome, 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 and thank you for joining. Come on in, come on in, grab a friend, and come on in. It is Focus On It Friday, and today is April the 9th, April the 9th. Shout out to my father-in-law, Mr. John Henry Bowling Jr., for a birthday today, uh, and hopefully we're going to be having some virtual celebrations but for now we're going to be having focus on it friday so come on in i hope that today i will be able to get some um see my comments i'm gonna try to see my comments today um because here lately i haven't been able to see them and i don't like that i do not like that so let's see if i can look over here and maybe like get that. some i do not there we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Hello, Amber. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. All right. I'm going to try to see if I can get my comments. I don't know. Comments on. Yes, comments are on. I like comments on. All right. All right. So she says, hey, hey, hey. I don't know get my comments i'm gonna have to figure this thing out um i don't know swipe left to real reveal comments hey but we're gonna keep it going we're gonna keep it going i'm dr brandy b and i'm so excited there we go my comments are here yay miss misty tucker says hello doc i can see it and i see amber's hey hey Miss Misty Tucker, we have been missing you. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for being with us today. I'm Dr. Brandy B. You all can go ahead and share this video. If you would like, let some people know that we're over here and we're having a good time with Dr. Brandy B. Of course, we're going to be talking about my favorite thing in the world, and that is ADHD. I figured I'd get back to some ADHD-related topics, although sometimes we need the encouragement that comes with some of those other topics as well. We've got Miss Latasha Faye Williams. She says, hi, Dr. Brandy, from Tasha in New Orleans, from PBC, from PBC, PBC, uh-oh, PBC. Oh, Lord, it sounds like I'm supposed to know you, but I'm thinking... I am thinking about who that is. Let me see if I can pull it up over there. I'm going to have to figure it out after I get done. Um, but thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. We've got Miss Dia. Thank you for watching. She says good afternoon, and we appreciate you for watching as well, Miss Dia. I'm going to give everybody uh, one more minute to come on in, and then we will go ahead and get started. I'm so excited to be with you all today from Tuskegee. From Tuskegee. Uh-oh, I'm messing up. Oh, yes, 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 PBC. My new family. Yes, 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 yes. I remember you now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. I spoke with a group on Tuesday night, a dynamic group of friends who have been friends since, I think, 1988 when they went to Tuskegee together. Um, Y'all, I don't have any friendships that long, so I was impressed by that in and of itself, but then also they have Bible study together. And I thought they'd just come together um, in their adult years to have Bible study, but no, they corrected me and they let me know that they have been friends since they first stepped on Tuskegee's campus as freshmen. So that is absolutely fantastic. She says, yes, Skip and Margaret's crew. Absolutely. I remember you now. I'm so sorry. I was like, who, where, I'm like, who do I know in New Orleans? But yes, welcome. Thank you. And welcome to Focus on It Friday. Several of them told me they would stop by. So I am glad to see you all here. Miss Misty Tucker says, fell and broke my ankle in two places and have to have surgery on Wednesday. Miss Misty Tucker, it looks like you just got off the wheelchair, then the rollator, uh, the little one leg thing. So you be careful. Don't you break anything else over there. You be careful. But we'll be praying for you. We've got Nia Nicole. She is watching. Thank you for watching. And Miss Destiny Stevens. Thank you, Miss Destiny, for joining us today. So glad to see you as always. Gonna go ahead and get started. I am Dr. Brandy B. 
You're a triple board certified child and adolescent psychiatrist, speaker, and author. And through my Facebook live streams, my webinars, and my small group speaking engagements, I help worried moms and dads of children with ADHD get the education that they need so that their children and them, so that everybody can be successful in the classroom and in life. Welcome to Focus On It Friday. And today we are going to be talking about things that you can do to help your child with ADHD. It just doesn't have to be the child with ADHD, though. It can be your child with any disorder. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Miss Paritha is watching and we say welcome and thank you for joining. Now, as a reminder, we're talking about ADHD and ways that you can help your child who has ADHD. But what exactly is ADHD? And I am glad that you asked. Miss Paritha says, good afternoon. Love your necklace. Thank you, darling. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So ADHD is a neurobehavioral disorder, which means there is a neurologic component and there is a behavioral component. Sometimes we call it a neurodevelopmental component, which means that there is a neurologic component and there is a developmental component. Either way, it is neurologic in basis, which means that we didn't make it up. The brain is doing something a little bit different. And now we uh, have a child or an adult who has... Um, some challenges, right? They present in a different way and they may have some challenges when they are doing things that require them to focus or be still. There are three types of ADHD. The first a presentation is the predominantly inattentive presentation. And this is where people lose things, forget things. They're easily distracted. They um, do not respond when their name is called. They appear as if they are are spaced out. I call it the lights are on, but nobody's home. They're disorganized. They procrastinate. And procrastination is a huge one because it can cause people to look like they're lazy. Um, and so after they procrastinate, then um, they tend to not finish things. And all of these things together can cause people to forget appointments, miss deadlines, and ultimately in the classroom to not do well academically. That is the inattentive presentation. Then you have the predominantly hyperactive impulsive presentation. This is where people are always on the go, uh, can't stay seated, fidget, blurt, interrupt, they're talkative, they're loud, they don't complete tasks. Um, they just seem to be act as act as if they are driven by a motor. So just always go, 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 loud, 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 talk, 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 talk. And this is what we call the predominantly hyperactive or um impulsive presentation. Now, I told you that there was a third type that is going to be where you are combined. People have the combined presentation. And this is where you have inattentive symptoms as well as hyperactive and impulsive symptoms, okay? So people have one of those three types. You're either predominantly inattentive in your presentation, you're predominantly hyperactive impulsive in your presentation, or you have the combined presentation. Any questions about that while I see who has joined us and what they are saying. Katie McDonald says, hey girl, hey, how you doing girl? Good to see you. Miss Renee Mitchell Ingram says, hello, and I say hello right back to you. Thank you for joining. Miss Cheryl Dumas is watching. Thank you. And Teresa Dobbins says, hello, hello. All right, let's see. Renee says, sounds just like my son, just like my son. Absolutely. And um, I think that is all. I think that is all. So if you understand those three different types of ADHD, just type in the chat for me, I understand. Just let me see, hear you right. I understand if you know now that there are three types of ADHD, say, I understand. All right. Hello, mommy. She says, good afternoon, Dr. Brandy B. And I say, hello, mommy. Uh, Faith says, uh-oh, and bubble. All right. Well, hello, Faith. And we thank you for watching, too, from the other room. Miss Latasha says, I understand. Amber says, I understand. Uh, Katie says, we definitely get that number three. Nia Nicole says, I understand. Cecilia says, I understand. Thank you for joining, Cecilia. Mr. Donald Pritchett says, I understand. And we thank you for watching. Renee says, I definitely understand. And Mama Diane says, I understand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Michelle Mitchell Jernigan, we thank you for watching. And Miss Michelle says that she understands, as well as Miss Teresa Dobbins. She says she understands as well. And we appreciate all of your comments and for letting me know that you understand. Now, if you've been watching me, let me know. Miss Cheryl Dumas, thank you. She says, I understand. For those that have been watching me, is there any more an ADD? Yes or no? 
Is ADD a diagnosis? Yes or no? Is ADD a diagnosis? Yes or no? Somebody said, I didn't come over here to get tested, lady, but I want you to be smart when you're over, you know, in New York City where I don't have a license and you go to someone else because if you were here, you'd come see me. But you're in New York City and you're going to go over there. Oh, Miss Nia Nicole says yes. So we're talking about is there a... Is ADD a diagnosis? Miss Latasha says not anymore. Mama, Mama, I'm gonna get you. Mama says yes. ADD. Renee says my my son loves me some Dr. Brandy Bowling. Absolutely, and I love him right back. ADD. Yes, uh, yes. Oh boy, we gotta do some talking. Who else is gonna come in? Is ADD a diagnosis? Yes. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Let Dr. Brandy B. tell you, ADD as a diagnosis went away. It no longer exists, right? So we only have ADHD, either predominantly in attentive presentation, predominantly hyperactive impulsive presentation, or combined presentation. ADD no longer exists. Now, doesn't really mean anything because your child, what we were saying when we said ADD in the day was that that child did not have a lot of hyperactive or impulsive symptoms. So now we would call the child who does not have a lot of hyperactive or impulsive symptoms ADHD, predominantly in attentive presentation. Y'all got that? Miss Sadie, Miss Miss Auntie Sadie says, good afternoon, Dr. Brandy B. And I say, good afternoon, right back to you. Miss Latasha says, I learned that Tuesday night. And yes, Miss Latasha, I noticed that you answered that it was no. That is absolutely correct. So just so you know, because I like people that hang out with me to be smart and to know the answer. And so if your doctor, you look at the note and it says ADHD, I don't want you to get offended and upset and say, but my child is not hyperactive. I want you to understand that there is no longer an ADD diagnosis. It's all ADHD. So let's do this again. Is ADD a diagnosis anymore? Let me see you do that again. ADD, is that a diagnosis anymore? Let's do that again. One more time. ADD, does it exist as a diagnosis? Anybody else got a Got a got a chance. Hello, Miss Brenda Fosh. Thank you for joining. No, says Miss Misty Tucker. No, says who else is gonna give us a no? Nope, says Miss Katie McDonald. Who else is gonna give us a big old no? No, says Miss Nia Nicole. No, says Miss Sadie Gresham with the exclamation point. Yes, 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 yes. Miss Amber says no. Miss Destiny says no. Very, very, very good. So now, no, but why again, says Renee? Mitchell Ingram because the because the um the 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 group of doctors who make these rules said that we weren't going to call it ADD anymore that's that's the real why and so the DSM which is the book by which we make our criteria uh or give our diagnoses with the fifth edition which is the edition that we're on so the DSM 5 previous was the 4 and the 4 said there was an not even the four. Um, I think the three said that there was a ADD and ADHD. And then what they decided was, okay, um, it's all ADHD. It's, it's all ADHD. And you're either one of these three types. Hyperactive, impulsive, inattentive, or combined. It's kind of like in the DSM-5, they removed Asperger's as a diagnosis. So Asperger's no longer exists as a diagnosis. It's all autism spectrum disorder. And then you're level one, two, or three. So there's really no high functioning as some people will call it. It's levels one, level two, and level three. But there is no longer any Asperger's, right? The people who had Asperger's were extremely upset about that because as a community, they felt some connection to other people who had similar symptoms and presentation to them. And as even pract practitioners, we knew what it meant when someone said that they had Asperger's. Well, now when you say autism spectrum disorder, that literally can mean any of a range of any different things. All right. So that is just what we have as diagnoses. And so when you go to a place, you will know that. Miss Michelle Mitchell Jernigan said no. Miss Dia said no. Coco Brown, my cousin in California, is watching. Hello. 
Miss Teresa Dobbins says, mine is like a monkey that has been caged up and turned loose in the woods. That means he's ping, on the go. All right, all right, all right. So thank you all for your comments, your questions, and your engagement. I really appreciate that. So what can we do to go ahead and help these babies? The first thing we got to do, the first thing, um, um, Mama Bolin yells no, apparently, from the kitchen. So we appreciate her comments as well. She always enjoys hearing me speak. So we actually weren't in the car today. We made it back home. So thank you for your comments. Katie McDonald says, Teresa, check this out. Asperger's is no longer a thing. No, Asperger's is no longer a thing. Yeah, but... I get it. When somebody says, I have Asperger's, I know exactly what they're talking about. But when it comes to diagnoses, when again, when you leave your doctor's office, you may notice that autism spectrum disorder is on the paper. And this is why. This is why. All right. So, but what do you do about it? What do you do if your child has Asperger's, autism, ADD, ADHD, whatever you want to call it? I don't care what you call it. The first thing that I want to do as far as helping your child is to acknowledge that something is going on. That's the first thing we got to do. Hello, Cousin Latina. We've been missing you, girl. Thank you for joining us today. Miss Katie McDonald says, both my nephew and niece have well had it. I don't know what they had or what they have. But if they had it, I'm glad they're doing better. Um, but the first thing we got to do is acknowledge that there is something going on. And I am really big, and that's why I spend so much time educating you all because I'm really big on education. A lot of times we don't really understand what we have going on or what our children have going on. And it's really hard to, to treat it, to even know what to do with it. If we don't call it by its name and take that thing head on. Um, so we we first, we need to identify that something is going on. And then when we get a diagnosis or even before we get the diagnosis formally, but when we suspect it, we need to do all that we can to learn about it. Do all that we can to learn about it. That's the first thing. And so that's why you come to Focus on It Friday. And I appreciate that. I've got a book coming out next May or next month, which will be May. I encourage you to get it because I break it down to the simplest term so that you can understand what exactly ADHD is. But this is going to go for any child with any learning or special need, all right? You've got to acknowledge that it exists. You cannot heal what you don't reveal, says my sis Erica. I didn't see her on the call today, but I appreciate that, her for that because you cannot heal what you won't reveal, right? And so denial is certainly more than a river. And But as long as we stay in denial and don't accept what's going on, there's no way we can learn about it and we certainly can't change it. I saw someone write it and it certainly is true that we must exercise patience. Children with any special needs, children in general, okay, require you to be very patient. Can somebody just write patient, be patient, P-A-T-I-E-N-T. Can somebody write be patient in the chat for me? Be patient, all right, and whatever sort of explicit explicative or exclamation point you want to write behind that but you gotta be patient be patient all right so that's number two so number one acknowledge that you know a challenge exists number two be patient we don't need any um sort of explanation to go with that but i will say part of your being patient is to acknowledge your own mental illnesses right if you are a parent who has adhd if you are a parent who has anxiety if you are a parent who has depression then the first thing that you need to do is get some help for you you will find that you're going to be screaming yelling uh drinking drugging and doing all sorts of unhealthy things in order to cope with your child who has some challenges if you don't get your own addressed, all right? So number one is to acknowledge that, you know, something is going on, call it by name, which is why I'm so big on knowing what the diagnosis is. So many people come to me and they say, well, I don't know what it is, but I take this forward. Well, a lot of my medicines work across several different diagnoses. So, I mean, like the stimulants, for example, they also treat narcolepsy. So, is your child, do they have sleeping disorders or are they having problems focusing? I don't know. All right. So, call it by name. Be patient. Be patient. Be very, very, somebody, somebody spelled it out for me. I love it. Let's see. First of all, be patient. Miss Rain, thank you. 
Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Ryan. Thank you for watching, Miss Ryan Hinton Smith. Katie McDonald says, How can you address this with a parent who doesn't believe in ADHD? Miss Katie says, Girl, you just sent them over here to um, focus on it Friday. I have about 50 videos. You just let them run wild. And if they don't believe in ADHD, all they need to go do is go to their local elementary school, their local high school, or their local workplace and watch people not get things accomplished. Right. But some things, you know, I just don't go out of my way explaining the people that come here and watch. They want to be here. And I, you know, I educate them. But even for people who come to my office and they're like, well, we don't believe in that. I'm like, OK, well, you know, if I can help you in the future, come back, um, because what, what can you do? What can you do for people who don't believe that they have diabetes, who don't believe that they have high blood pressure? Right. And we just watch them have a stroke. We watch them with diabetes, cut off a toe. Then another toe, then below the knee, then above the knee. We watch them get in diabetic comas. We watch them get on dialysis. We watch them, you know, do all the things that happen with people who didn't believe they had it. And in my opinion, if you don't take care of it, then you don't believe it. So I don't, I don't know. We just have to pray for them and educate, pray and educate, pray and educate. I told you all I was on with a group on Tuesday. This question comes up all the time. How do you get people to understand about mental illness in general? You pray, you educate, you pray, you educate. And then you lead by example. If they know that your child has something going on or you have something going on, you're depressed, but you won't get treatment. It's going to be kind of hard to um, get them to do it. You know, speak, leading by example with the coronavirus vaccine. I went and got it myself when I had close friends and families who was like, well, um, well, okay. When I got my second shot, I'm like, hey, next thing I know, guess what they're trying to do? I'm signed up. Well, you should have been signed up a long time ago. But a hands-off approach is my approach, right? So just treat people with kindness, gentleness, and then you just have to allow people to do what you what they're going to do. Nia Nicole says, do you, do we ever grow out of ADHD? Girl, 50% do and 50% don't, which means that we got a lot of adults running around with ADHD. I call ADHD the dream killer. If you ever want somebody to kill a dream, let them have ADHD. It will get killed quickly. All right. Um, Dia says, be patient. Uh, Tammy says, be patient. JD says, be patient. Thank you for joining, JD Cheek. Uh, Latasha says, be P-A-T-I-E-N-T. -E That's the level of patience that she is exercising over in New Orleans. Um, let's see. Teresa says to me and Nicole, I think they learn how to cope with it when they get older. Some do and some don't, right? Um, Latasha says, get help for you first. Amen to that. We got too many parents walking around talking about, I'm going to let Jesus heal it. And I have no problem with that. Y'all know I am filled with the Holy Ghost, five baptized and all that other stuff. But when my head hurts, I'm going to take something for that. Right? And when I go to walk across the street, what am I going to do? Look both ways. I'm not going out there talking about stopping the name of love. I am Jesus's. No, I'm going to look both ways before I step out in that street. So you can have Jesus, a therapist, and some medicine too, but that's a whole other story. We're not going there just yet. Uh, Katie McDonald says, you can't take care of others if you don't take care of yourself too. Absolutely. Renee says, sorry, I had to leave the group. Be back in a few. We'll be missing you and waiting. Miss Robbie Cantrell, thank you for joining. Latasha says, 100 Hello, Miss Dina says, hello, Dr. Brenda. You look so pretty. I miss you. Girl, you know I miss you too. When this pandemic is over, maybe I'll get back over there. Nia Nicole says, a child with ADHD, can they struggle with expressing how they feel? Yes. They can struggle with just about anything. They can get depressed and they can get anxious as well. Um, if you go back, Miss Nia Nicole, at some point I had a, um, a talk on... Uh, maybe the changing faces of ADHD or how ADHD presents. And in the very, very young, the elementary school kids, they're very hyperactive. The middle school kids are very um, 
they, they will oftentimes come to me with symptoms of anxiety and depression. Parents will come to say this child is anxious. They're irritable. You say hi and they are, they snap at you, right? And then when I do a really thorough history, indeed what's going on is ADHD. And part of that is because you can't get anything right. You can't complete your tasks. Those grades aren't coming as easy as they did in elementary school. So you were making all A's and now you're making D's, C's, and F's. And it conflicts with that age where parents say that the child is filling him or herself because it's that adolescent year. So they could be or it could be some ADHD that's sneaking out on them. Let's see. Miss Katie McDonald says, oh boy, let's see. Katie McDonald says, it's like hitting a brick wall. Oh boy. It's like hitting a brick wall when you're trying to help your child, but it's not combined effort. It's like a tug of war. Absolutely. Tug of war. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Very long post. I can't see on my phone. So I have to go over here to my iPad. Mia Nicole. Yes, very much. Um, Nia McCoy has ADHD. Let's see. Nia Nicole. Wow. I have it myself. And I noticed at times when I want to express my feelings, I can't because nobody understands. Yep. Sometimes the words won't even come out. The thoughts are so just kind of all over the place. They're moving around quickly that the words just can't come out. Katie McDonald says, but Jesus also puts these gifts in these individuals to help them. Absolutely. So anything that we um, see as a challenge can also be something that is a benefit. Uh, but anything gone unchecked, too much love, uh, you know, actually can put a person in a situation where they're taken advantage of. So too much of anything can be a bad thing. We have to make sure that everything is done what decent and in order, according to the good book. All right. Latina says, what's the difference in AD, between ADHD and autism? So autism is a social disorder. Um, in autism children lack the ability to navigate in and out of social situations. So things like nonverbal and verbal um, statements, but nonverbal statements, like if you get too close to me and I do this, knowing that that means back up, you're too close. Or if I'm crying, knowing that that means I'm either sad, I'm hurt, I'm down, something is wrong. Um, and so those children or adults may miss that and may laugh. Say, for example, I fell and I hurt myself and I'm crying. They may laugh because initially the, the falling was funny to them. Um, they may not, you know, understand certain nuances of being social, like, hey, how you doing? Which is really, it sounds like a question, but that's a statement. And so they may go about trying to tell the person how they're doing. And then when the person walks off and keeps walking, because when we say, hey, girl, how you doing? We're really like, all right, girl, bye. And we keep walking. And so they may miss that and say, well, that person was rude. Or we may say, girl, we got to get together for lunch. And people do that for 10 years. And they may not understand that that's just what people do. When we really want to get together for lunch, we'll set a date. And so they may say, oh, that person is a liar. They're very concrete. They don't understand that rules were meant to be broken and rules change so that uh, they like things to be done the same way, uh, sometimes at the same time. So they may get up and put their sock on right foot, then left foot, um, right shoe, then left shoe, but say they can't find the right shoe, then they can't go on to the left and then come back to the right once they find it. So very concrete in understanding, very concrete in the way that they do things, um, but primarily it is a social disorder. So that is why you can have children with completely normal intellect, ability to understand things and maybe even to do things, but they will have challenges with relationships. Um, not being invited to the parties at school, not being invited to the sleepovers, not being picked for the soccer team, um, and it having more to do with just your pure athleticism. So it is social with some speech and some concreteness mixed in. So if speech is not developing well, that is something that we can characterize it um, by. So yeah, but it's primarily a social disorder. Now, children with autism in large part also have ADHD symptoms. So it will be all the things that we talked about with ADHD as well. But the children with ADHD do not have the social stuff. Now, ironically, children who have ADHD sometimes do get left out of social, social situations because children are very quick to pick up 
on any child who looks or feels differently than they do. So the child with uh, ADHD may find that it's difficult for them to make friends because say, for example, they're so impulsive that they just reach out and kick kids or hit kids. Um, or they just talk so much that other kids are like, I can't talk with that kid because he talks so much that he doesn't let me get my turn. Um, but this is just because of the impulsive nature of ADHD. Whereas with autism, uh, those children really do have challenges understanding all the nuances of being social. Hopefully that helped. Let me know if that didn't help. Um, let's see. Rosa says, hello, cute. I'm here. Hello, beautiful. Thank you for watching. Miss Robbie Cantrell, Coco Brown says, I believe Zaria has ADHD along with anxiety and it's affecting her academically. Looking for resources. So you got all the resources here to learn all about it. Um, if you're looking for where to go for treatment, I would start with the pediatrician. The pediatrician is going to be the first step. Uh, in helping you get the diagnosis and then kind of knowing where to go in your area. Um, I can reach out if you want me to and see about people in my network of professional colleagues and friends who are in your area and then I can refer you there. If that would be something that would interest you, just let me know. We've got Miss Tammy Beagle Hicks. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. All right, says, let's see. Miss Katie McDonald says that Coco has come to the right place. Thank you, girl, for that compliment. Uh, Miss Renee is back. We missed you. Miss Lamisha Dawn Brown says, hello, sweet lady. I'm here, and we appreciate you being with us. Miss Ryan says, autism, repetitive behaviors, hand flapping, pacing back and forth, turning lights and on. Absolutely so. So in addition to the social piece, which is the hallmark of autism, then you get these restrictive, um, repetitive things that they do, which could be any of the things Miss Ryan mentioned, which could be the hand flapping, which uh, bouncing, which can be when they're excited, rocking. Um, a lot of children will make loud, very loud, um, you know, nonsensical word, uh, sounds rather. Some of them may even sound like animal sounds. Um, anything that is repetitive. So a lot of times people will want to diagnose with them, them with OCD. The difference between the repetition of OCD and the repetition of autism is that OCD bothers the person. They are like, oh my God, if I don't do this, then something will happen. If I don't go back and check to see if the oven is on, or if I don't go back and check to see if the light is off, the house is going to burn down, or a switch is going to trip, or something bad will happen. I've got to do it. That's OCD. The kids with autism, they're just happy flicking the light on and off and they're looking at you and they are doing it or they're waving a piece of paper or they're watching uh, the, you know, the pendulum on a clock or they're spinning the wheels of a car, just spinning it or they're getting down and watching the wheels move. Because the other thing about children with autism is that they like parts of whole. All right, so they like to take things apart because the part to them is more exciting than the whole. When I sit down on a swing, I want to just sit down and pray that the thing holds me up. When a child with autism notices a swing, they may get down low and look at the nuts and the bolts and see how it's all working in concert. So thank you for that comment, Miss Ryan. Yes, that is a very, very, very key part of that. Um, let's see, Miss Erica says, hello, my beautiful sis, and I say hello back to you, my beautiful sis. Uh, Miss Missy T Tucker says, my son to a T. Yes, 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 yes. Autism, I love, 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 love autism as a topic. Um, it is my second favorite thing in all of child psychiatry to do and to talk about. All right, so let's get back. So we're talking about things you can do for your child to help your child with ADHD. You can acknowledge that it is it exists or any mental illness. Acknowledge that it exists. And yes, ADHD is a mental illness, y'all, Okay. Just so you know, I just don't want y'all to be out here and you see this and you're like, I didn't know that this is what this, yes, it is. Okay, I want you to know that. Your doctor may not tell you, but I'm going to tell you. Acknowledge that they have the diagnosis. Learn all you can about it. Number two, be patient. What else we got to do? We got to hurry up. Number three, stay positive. If you get a child um, with any, if you get a child with 
any diagnosis, diabetes, high blood pressure, whatever, stay positive. Know that it is not the end of the world. Your child, your son, your daughter can be whatever it is that you destined them to be. But the but you've got to stay positive while still being honest with yourself. I'm a big fan of parenting the child that you got and not the one you hoped for. Because hoping, you know, trying to parent the child that you hoped for gets you lost time and really, really, really broken hopes and dreams. So make sure that you're being positive, you're being patient, and that you're parenting the child that you got. Number four is to be consistent. Be consistent and be organized. Now, if you have ADHD yourself, these may be very difficult for you, but you really need to be consistent. As with any child, if you promise them punishment, you need to deliver punishment. If you promise them a reward, you need to prom deliver a reward. Um, some things that you can do to help with the child with ADHD, it, put the book bag at the door at night or even in the car. Get it together at night. Mornings are particularly difficult for children with ADHD. Why? Because there's so much going on. And remember, they are just way overstimulated. They're easily distracted. They don't know what to do. You know, develop a flow chart for the mornings. Get out of bed, brush your teeth, get in shower. Shower, right? Because how many kids with ADHD get in the shower and they're wet, but they put no soap on them. They're just looking around, singing songs, and you're like, oh my God, it's time to go and you're still in here with no soap. So soap up, you know, then dry off, underwear on, lotion on, really detailed step by step because ADHD is consistently inconsistent. Children who have it, it they are consistently inconsistent. They're consistently inconsistent, all right? They're consistently inconsistent. And if you didn't know, they are consistently, inconsistently inconsistent. What does that mean? That they are forever changing inconsistently somebody just write for me inconsistently inconsistent inconsistently inconsistent so they may know the the spelling words monday tuesday and 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 thursday when you're going over it with them but wednesday they didn't know it and friday they didn't know it and friday is when you needed them to know it inconsistently inconsistent all right so getting things ready at night getting their clothes ready at night laying out three full outfits if your child needs to still make a decision in the morning you're going to choose one of these three because you helped me get these three out last night you're going to pick one of them this morning and we're rolling out all right no you know they need a schedule stick to a schedule they need a consistent bedtime and all of these are tips that you can use for any child all right consistent bedtime Consistency, consistency, consistency. Because remember that they are inconsistently inconsistent. All right? Let me go up here and see what we got. Okay. Study tips. Um, quiet spot, no cell phones, no house phone, no dog that barks, no baby siblings. You know, and now if you live in a two bedroom apartment, some of these things may be difficult, right? Because no matter where the dog is, everybody's going to hear the dog barking. But if the dog is in that room and the child is in this room, that may mean that the, he may hear the dog barking, but he won't reach down and attempt to pet the dog. So a, a, a safe place that's free of distractions as much as you can be free of distractions Come in and hit the door and study. That was the routine that I grew up with. That is what we'll do with, you know, my kids. Come in, homework first, then everything else. Homework, then everything else. Get that out of the way. Um, that's the biggest thing. Consistency and free from distractions. If you get them free from distractions, you may get them to go ahead and be able to complete um, homework. Repetition with studying is the key. It takes you anywhere from three to seven times to be able to really go, aha, I got it, unless you're just some baby genius. Okay? I had to leave the group when you were talking about Asperger's, that part, that being part of Nathan's diagnosis, why are they not acknowledging it now if I had heard that right? Yes, so again, they, again, this group of people that get together. Um, it's not that they are not acknowledging Asperger's. It's just that 
as a diagnosis, it no longer exists. So it is a part of, it got consumed with autism spectrum disorders. So in the past, we had autism spectrum disorders and there were five of them that was named. Asperger's was one, pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified was another, RET disorder was another, and childhood disintegrative disorder was another. And what they said was, we don't need to have all these named disorders, we're gonna go clump them all together as autism spectrum disorders, and then just kind of let people, let them fall out you know, where they are. And so the Asperger's community, like I said, they uh, were really upset about that because um, they understood that they were, they had their unique thing going on. And when they said they were an Aspie, as they called themselves, people knew what that meant. Um, but yeah, I don't know why they did it, but that's what they did. That's what they did. Um, mom says good information and love them. That's right. No matter who they are, we got to love them. Miss Katie says, oh girl, that was straight for me. Well, I'm glad I am giving you some stuff that you can use. Mr. Donnell Burrell has joined us. Thank you. Miss Latasha says this is great info and we do it like this every week. So we are so glad that we met and that you have joined us today. Miss Teresa Dobbins says another thing is when the, is when the child has a breakdown and you hear people say, if that was mine, I would whip them. You know, sometimes you have time to educate people. And what is the other thing I said? Educate, love, and pray for it. Sometimes there's a time to educate. Sometimes there's a love, time to love. Sometimes there's a time to pray for it. And then sometimes there's just time to ignore. And here's the deal. People just don't understand. Um, and I think that's why people love for me to give them advice. Is because I'll say, I don't really know what I would do in that instance. You don't know what you would do in a, a situation until you were in that situation. And so many people, you know, because I think people have in their mind about what children with ADHD look like, what children with autism look like. Hey, people say they know what a doctor looks like. And I don't know if I've been told I don't look like a psychiatrist, whatever the heck that means. So we can't look at people as much as we want to be able to look at people and tell what's going on with them. You really just can't. And so people may be looking at your child in Walmart, in Sam's, wherever you are, and, uh, you know, think that your child doesn't have any challenges because they look a certain way or they don't look a certain way. And so they know what they may have done with their neurotypically developing child, but they don't understand that your child is not developing in that same way. So it calls us really to, to be, to do what the Bible tells us to do, which is to be slow, right? To pass judgment because we don't know the situation. We don't know what's going on. And so whipping is just really not the answer to everything in a child who's even neurotypically developing. Whipping is not always the answer. Now, if it works for your child, go for it. But that just actually is not all that always a the, the answer, a good answer, or whatever else. And so you just really have to kind of approach it from that person is ignorant. And if you just want to say to yourself, they're ignorant. And it's not um, a derogatory thing to say that. They just don't know. It, to be ignorant means to just not know. And so they don't know. So they shouldn't make any statements. They shouldn't make pass any judgment. But that's just what people do. We all do it, right? We probably judge somebody today already about something because that's the nature of being a human being. And so you can either take the opportunity to say, I'm sorry, or to not say I'm sorry, but to say he has autism. And so whipping him would really just not be the answer and walk off, leave them feeling stupid. Um, you know, but you have to figure out what works for you. And certainly the same response won't always work because some things are going to just get down to your core and they're really going to hurt you as a person because you're a parent, you're a human being. That's your loved one. That's your baby. And so to have someone looking at them as like as if they are an animal, a creature, someone who's not even fit to be in the store. That hurts, right? So you want to fight. I saw uh, something on Facebook that says, I am the one who will smile in my mug shot over my babies. And that is absolutely the truth. I will be there cheesing like, yep, I did it and I'll do it again for my kid. But we don't want you to fight. I'm not promoting that, not condoning that. I'm just saying that I completely get it. And so whatever feelings you feel, whether they be anger, um, frustration or whatever else, even if you want to question God about why me, why this child, I'm not set up for this. Know that you are set up for it. You can handle it. You were given that baby as a special gift and you are quite 
able to handle whatever comes your way. Whatever you don't have, whatever you are not innately equipped with, that's what I'm here for. And there are so many other people around the country who are like me. Maybe not as fabulous as I am, and I get that. Okay, we forgive them for that. But there's someone out there that can help you. You've got to just believe in yourself, which was my next one. You know, stay positive and believe in yourself. Stay positive. This is not a death sentence. It's not an end of the world sentence. It's just that you got a special gift. And when you get a special gift, it, it requires some special care, right? And you've got to educate yourself to make sure that you are equipped for the job, right? When I went into medicine, I didn't know that I had a, a gift of, you know, talking about ADHD, but when it was put upon me, this special gift, I tried to run away from it too. When, when, when autism landed in my lap because the chair of the department who was an autism expert and whose name is on many of the books, when he singled me out to work with me, I was like, who, me? Why he want to work with me? I don't want to, I don't want to know about that. And now I can work with it and ease parents' minds about it. It's a gift. And I had to acknowledge that, accept it, embrace it, and pray about it. And that's what the same thing I encourage you to do in parenting the child with ADHD, autism, Asperger's, whatever it is that you call it. Just get the baby some help. All right. Um, so I think, oh, uh, what else we need to talk about? Consistency, um, special education. Please get the baby some special education. We're running long, but y'all keep asking questions. You know I'm going to answer them. Get the baby special education. Um, it should go without saying, but you got 504 plans through your school. You have IEPs, individualized education plans through your school. It could be from anything, you know, related to getting speech therapy, occupational therapy, uh, or even having something written down that says your baby needs a left-hand desk. All of these are special education. Gifted children are in special education. Typical education is meant basically for the, the C student, right? The ABC student. So if you have a child with an exceptional IQ who's already doing above grade level work, that child may need to be in some special education classes to be in gifted or advanced classes, okay? There is no shame in getting your child what they need. There is no shame. You didn't do anything wrong. You're just working with the gift that you were given, right? And you're parenting the child that you were given. So make sure that you are getting the child whatever they need from a special education standpoint. And really being adamant about that, really fighting for your kid. It is their right to have that stuff. But if you don't stand up for them, it will not happen. I am, a, as the doctor will tell you what to do, tell you what to ask for, I hang out all the time time wink wink blink blink with a person who does education law so i know what is supposed to happen but i cannot leave my office to come with you so you got to be your child's advocate and make sure that those things happen let's see what we've got good afternoon says mr donnell blessings how are you feeling today i'm feeling good thank you so much for asking today is a good day we've got inconsistently inconsistent pray don't play i love it miss katie educate love and prayer love that dr b absolutely that's how we just in general people are lacking education people are lacking love and people are certainly lacking prayer so whenever you get an opportunity to put those things in combination that is a good thing dr eunice thank you for joining she says great Great advice. We thank you for being out there on the front line. Uh, Dr. Eunice, I believe that is a pediatrician. But even if she's not a pediatrician, she is an internal medicine doctor. And listen, y'all, y'all are wearing your pediatricians and your internal medicine doctors down with your with your mental health problems. They are a good first line, but when you start needing therapy, go on and get yourself a therapist. Help them out. They have 15 minutes on their schedule to accommodate you and your bunions and your gout and your bad knees and your headaches and your husband cheating. One of those things somebody else can help with. So help them out but we do thank you for being on the front line of medicine mr donnell says dr b i know this may be off subject but is there such a thing as a child narcissist so narcissism as a personality disorder so narcissistic personality disorder um does exist these are people who um so it's a little bit different from what we think of in lay terms but it's uh 
very close. These people tend to be know-it-alls. They are, they hurt people's feelings and they are unapologetic in it. They, um, I'm sorry guys, my, 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 I'm about to lose power here. They are unapologetic in their hurting of people's feelings. They don't follow social norms and social rules. So they're irresponsible. Don't take care of their financial responsibilities. Um, they just go about life acting as if it's all about them. Um, you cannot, well, we typically, we don't give that diagnosis until child, until adulthood. You can certainly probably have some children who behave that way, but by and large, I must say, I don't run across a lot of children that behave as narcissists. Miss Linda May is watching, and we appreciate that. Uh, Miss Lish Will says, okay, we thank you, girl. That's one of our educators. She is joining us today, my high school classmate. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm guessing that she's saying okay to the special education part. So yes, 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 yes. Please do that. Uh, let's see. Miss Teresa Diamond says, amen. Latasha Faye says, stay positive and believe in yourself. Miss April Robertson, thank you for joining um, let's see, Miss Lish says, I need for every parent to hear this. This is so true and so needed. Absolutely, absolutely. You didn't do anything wrong. And I posted, y'all, maybe three weeks or so back that not getting your child the help they need in an academic setting is like not allowing a wheel, uh, a ramp for a person in a wheelchair. We wouldn't dare do that. In fact, there are laws against it. I think it's the ADA, Americans Disabilities Act. Um, I think that is what covers that. You've got to, in a public place, especially if it receives federal funding, have accommodations for people with physical handicaps. Um, and so we will cut up and act up about that, but we will watch our kids struggle in the classroom. I don't, you know, hey, but I just educate, pray, and love, right? Until such time as somebody asks my opinion. Because if you see me in the streets, People think I'm psychoanalyzing them, which is a field of psychiatry that I don't even do, or psychology. Um, but I want y'all to know that when I'm not being paid or voluntarily volunteering, I'm not thinking about working. So please believe me. If you see me in the Kmart or the Walmart, I'm probably trying to hope that my kid ain't going to jump out the basket or do something that's going to have me at the emergency room. I am not concerned about trying to diagnose yours. So if you see me in the street, you can rest assured that whatever y'all got going on, Unless I see you abusing somebody because I am a mandated reporter and I'm going to report. I don't really care what you're doing. Handle your child. If your child laid out in the floor, guess what I'm going to do? Go to the other aisle and walk around because I'm going to let you handle that the way that you know how to handle it. And also because I know that child has something going on right now. They don't need my input on this. Let me walk around and not offer no no pamphlets. You know, people in the store trying to give you pamphlets. Let that mama do her job. She got enough stress on her. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. All right? Renee says, well, thank God that he did because my son would not be where he is today without you. Oh, well, thank you. And I just love him to pieces. He is a sweetheart. He is a sweetheart. Miss you, uh, Dr. Eunice says, I'm so glad you accepted your calling. Girl, I ran for a long time. I ran. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was tired from running. That's one thing about God, honey. He will knock you down and make you say, now, are you ready now? So, here I am. She has an IEP. What's a 504 plan? So, a 504 plan is le less restrictive uh, than an IEP. Of course, I'm going to explain this in my upcoming book, which will be out next week. Uh, Shine, Understanding ADHD so that your child can be a star. But the 504 plan, if you will, simply put, is a list of suggestions. Whereas an IEP is law. So anything written on an IEP is law. And the person that I um, told you I hang out with uh, understands that if school boards don't do that, school boards get sued. 504 plans, they are really nice suggestions that if the school gets around to, you know, hey, they can do it. That's a very much oversimplified explanation. So don't my uh, educator friends go running and jump on me. Um, but some children just don't qualify for IEPs because there are, I think, 13 very specific criteria for um, that would qualify for an IEP. Other things, like I mentioned earlier, a left-handed desk, that may fall under a 504 plan, which would mean that if your school has them, great. If your school doesn't have left-handed desk for your child who's left-handed, well, they just going to have to, you know, figure it out with the, with the other way, okay? 
Um, Miss Lish says, say it, Dr. Brandy B. Girl, I don't know what I said, honey, but I'm glad that I said it. And if you remind me, I will say it again. But I bet I'm saying it in my book, too. Because this stuff, y'all, I am passionate about. I eat, live, and breathe this stuff. I really, really, really do. But I'm not so pushy that if you tell me you don't want it, I'm not going to give it to you. I'm not out there preaching like the people on the side of the road with the microphone. That's not going to be me because when I'm off, I'm off. I love being with my family. But when I'm on, I'm passionate about what I am what I do. And I am definitely willing to pour out to those who have a vessel that wants to receive. Dr. Yuna says, yes, interventions are important and early. Yes, when we talk about autism or when we talk about anything in general, the best thing you can do is get that child in speech therapy who is not speaking. We know for a fact one of the best prognostic indicators is speech, which means that how far you go in life is going to be determined on your ability to communicate. So get the baby some speech. Get over yourself and get the baby in therapy. I thought you were a pediatrician. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Dr. Eunice. Elizabeth Peters says, thank you for what you do. And I say you are welcome. And thank you for watching. Katie McDonald says, uh-oh, weather watch is here. See you on Zoom next week. Have a great weekend. You too. All right. Who else? Um, Miss Dia says, shine. Yes, yes, yes. I had to fight to get her the IEP, says Coco Brown. Yes, it is definitely a fight, which is why I said earlier, you are your child's advocate. You are your child's advocate. I'm not your child's advocate. You are as the parent. You, 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 you. All of y'all out there, all 22 of y'all, you all, you are your child's advocate. So make sure that you are doing the work of the advocate. And there's one last thing I want to tell you about, and that is to treat your baby's ADHD. Now, y'all know over here on Focus on the Friday, I don't talk about medicine because that is when I really start to lose people. Start, people start coming up with all these... Um, you know, isms is what I just lump them up to. Isms is what people say uh, about them. And But you need your baby in some therapy to help them with the behavioral piece because there can be a lot of irritability that comes from ADHD. And then sometimes that baby needs some medication. That teacher needs some help. Um, the bus driver needs some help. The bus driver cannot, like you, uh, in the old days, you put that one arm on that baby. That bus driver can't do that and hold your baby down in the seat. And so it's unsafe. So now you got to get off your job, come pick that baby up, and you know you need to be on your job. Or they're disruptive in the classroom. So before you can get to the end of the block, they're calling you to come pick that baby up because that baby has already flipped over three chairs in the room. It is quite a disruption, right? ADHD is not about... Uh, being a disruption is not about being a disturbance. It is about a whole lifestyle. All right. Look, go back and look at my talk on the benefits of treating ADHD. We don't talk about what the treatments are, but we talk about the benefits of treating. So that is what I need you all to do. Let's see. Miss Renee says, you would not believe that how many schools that tried to get out of or not obey the IEP. And trust me, I know I've done it long enough. Oh, I believe it. I absolutely believe it. Uh, Miss Lish says the full truth. Miss Lish, do you teach special ed? Um, the but the full truth. We could do a whole talk on on just special education. My aunt Pam taught special education. Um, and the truth of the matter is that the school systems just don't have enough resources. And you know what I tell parents when they tell me that? Not, not your child's problem. But that's because I hang out with somebody who does education law. I teach intervention. Intervention. So I think that's like one step. They're trying to keep the kid off the IEPs. And in my studies, I found that different school systems do different things. I usually share a classroom with special ed teachers, though. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So the help is there. But you have to be okay, parents, with what's going on with your child. So much you know, and my cousin, my cousin, she's not on here, so I won't mention her name, but she, whenever she's here, she's very vocal, and she's very vocal on her own page about what's going on with her child. Um, but she said that, you know, when she first found out 
about her child's diagnosis. You know, there was the grief. And it's okay to grieve, parents. It really is because there is a loss. And so if you go back and check out my talk on grief, uh, I think that was about August 8th or so, the 12th, 15th, somewhere in there. Um, when you have dreams that for whatever reason don't get a chance to be fulfilled, whether because you didn't go to school or whether because your child was born with some challenges, there is the loss. There is a loss there of that dream being fulfilled. And it's okay to grieve that, but just like with grief of any other nature, we've got to figure out a way to quickly keep going. But going back to my cousin, she always says that her son tells her, Mama, I'm okay. Mama, I'm okay. If we would get over our own embarrassment, our own grief, or whatever other frustrations we have, our children really do okay. They would do okay. We just need to be there to make sure that they don't fall, make sure no one's taking advantage of them, that they are getting the things that are their rights, and that we are there to support them in the best way possible. You know, I've had parents tell me, I need to look into these medicines. What you gonna look at? I was in school from four to about 35. So where are you looking that I've already looked? And if you trust me for everything else that I say, you listen to the words falling out of my mouth like it's money. But when I get to medicine, well, you got to do some research. I've not, I've not found anyone yet whose Google search outmatched what I had learned. And that's not being ugly. That's just being honest. I have to stay in education. Because that's what my job and my license requires of me. So trust your child's doctor. If you don't trust your child's doctor, that's a problem that goes beyond, you know, their ADHD or whatever diagnosis. All right, let's see what we got. I teach intervention. I usually share, okay. Um, Renee, let's see. I think it should be a requirement for a teacher to make a class where they are introduced into the special education and their rules. I agree. And I don't know, maybe Miss Lish uh, can comment about if that is a part of teacher's education but just like with anything else miss renee um that is a gift and so i wouldn't want a teacher teaching my child special education if that was not their gift because i can teach you anything people can be taught anything people cannot be taught empathy people cannot be taught this level of passion and compassion that i have for adhd so I don't want that person teaching my class. I'm good. We'll figure it out at home. And I'm not a big fan of homeschooling. But we will figure it out at home before somebody who is made to teach my child special education be in there teaching them. But that's just me. But I do think that they should have at least some understanding of what happens when it is needed and, and that sort of thing. And Miss Cecilia says, all facts. Lish says it usually is, but it's not enough. Exactly. You need that gift. See, you need that gift. Some people are operating outside of their gift. Truth be told, some teachers are operating outside of their gift, but I ain't gonna get on the teacher side. But teaching is a gift. To sit up with somebody else's child all day for seven hours, that is a gift. You need to want to be there. And so some of that is a problem but that's a whole nother problem i understand that but what i'm saying is for them to at least understand that some of the symptoms of what they're seeing yes and i do have teachers to reach out to me as a matter of fact i have a whole thing coming up in june where i'm going to be talking to teachers about what some of these mental illnesses are and how they may present in their class um because some of my colleagues don't even understand adult doctors have no clue about the fact that turning 18 doesn't mean that adhd goes away pediatricians have no understanding especially old school pediatricians they're like adhd whip that child so there's just a lack of education back to the three things education education love and prayer but education is really the key for anything people don't understand black people why they aren't educated they weren't around them when i went to indiana there were people who had lived their whole entire lives not having ever been around anybody black and they wanted to touch my hair. And we had to have a quick lesson in how you don't touch my hair. Because I don't touch yours. I don't really care what it feels like. So you don't touch mine. But I had to educate them. Now you can go Google. Because by the time I was in residency, Google was a thing. We can Google and find out stuff. So, but we got to educate, educate, educate. All right. Miss Eunice says, yes, ma'am. I don't know what about, but girl, yes, ma'am. All right, y'all. Say the diagnosis. Um, patience, what else? Stay positive, 
put uh, special education, be consistent, um, keep your composure, keep calm, be patient, just knowing it's okay. If y'all remember my it's okay mug, remember it's okay. It this one got broken, but it's okay. It's okay. Your child is going to be fine, but you got to be honest with yourself about what their limitations are. Sometimes parents will say to me, my child is going to be an engineer. And I said, that's awesome. Do you see this child living alone? And they said, no, I really don't. Okay. There's a mismatch. And so we may not talk about it at this session, but we need to talk about this mismatch. Your child cannot possibly be an engineer, but you don't trust them to be able to live alone. When they are, you know, as one of my cousins making the headlight for Toyota or whatever it is that he does. Now we got people riding around having wrecks because the engineer, you see what I'm saying? So we've got to make sure that, yeah, so maybe he can't be an engineer, but maybe he could be the tester for flashlights. I don't know. You know, we just need to make sure that it has, there's a match. And I believe in making dreams shine, which is why I named my book Shine. Everything about me is bright. My personality. I don't want to even be around damn negative people. They suck your energy out of you. Y'all know anybody down? Everything is negative. Jesus, the glass is always half empty. Oh my goodness. They just suck you. They just drain you. Y'all wouldn't even come over here if y'all if I was like, welcome to the show. It's dreary today. I don't care what the weather looks like outside. I'm going to be like, I see the sun peeping through. But that's me. And that's what you need to find when you have a child who is differently abled. Um, find those kids, um, those parents who can help you. I love my mom groups. They are my tribe. Miss um, Amber on here is in my mom group. Several of my mom friends come back and watch. Because nobody understands being a mom except another mom. And I'm not talking a mom who parented me in 1978 or even a parent who parented a child in 2000 or even a parent who ch parented a child in 1990. Those, those things are very different from what we're dealing with now. The basics are the same, but it's different. All right, so I'm going to get out of here. I Do y'all have any other questions? I have to leave girl but we'll see you on the 19th i'll be looking forward to it any other questions any other questions miss coco i need to add california somebody asked me in in the group twos to add california to my list so i'm gonna add california to my list i'm getting licensed in about five other states so i'm gonna add california girl i'll come treat your baby myself Anything else? Anybody else? This has been fun today. This has been fun. Loving your talk today on ADHD. Thank you, Miss Constance. I forgot I was intending to send your baby um, a reminder. She says she always forgets. Miss Constance's daughter is my longtime friend from college and med school, the wonderful Andrea Nicole over in Columbus, Georgia, saving the Tatas. She is a breast radiologist. Love her to pieces. I've got some fabulous friends. So look, if y'all ever find y'all selves in a situation and you're like, hey, Dr. Brandy B, I got this situation going on. I just want to run it by one of your colleagues who is as fabulous as you. Just hit me up because I have a lot of fabulous and uh, fun and smart colleagues who would be gracious and glad to help you out they are um, as passionate about their fields as i am about mine all right if there is nothing else it is one o'clock 108 oh my goodness y'all i kept y'all way too long but that means we had a good discussion you learned a lot and i got to leave you a little part of my genius and my passion so i'm gonna get out of here guys i am dr brandy b your triple board certified child and adolescent psychiatrist through my facebook live streams such as this one uh, my upcoming book my webinars um, just small group speaking engagements or any other way that I can be helpful. I help worried moms and dads get the education that they need. We don't leave the grandparents and the neighbors out either, the pastors. We welcome all of them so that they can get what education so that they can help the children in their lives be successful in the classroom and in life. If you want these tips and if you want to keep up with me, go on over to www.adhdsuccess.me. Somebody write that in the chat for me. www 
dot a d h d success dot me. That's a d h d s u c c e s s dot m e. I've got a video over there for you where I talk about the seven tips to get your child through success in the classroom. Absolutely free. It'll sign you up to be on my um, list to be the first to receive my book announcement when it comes out. Um, but yes, I have enjoyed today. I'm going to get out of here. If y'all have any questions, just hit me up. I love you all and I will see you next Friday at noon Central Standard Time. Bye-bye.